Thank you. Thank you very much. Kindly resume your seats. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our hardworking branch and constituency executives, our party members and supporters, members of our Council of Elders, national executives present here, members of the professional forum, my colleague ex-appointees of the NDC, our media friends, invited guests, my wife, Lodina. And my son, Sharaf, who has accompanied me here. <laughs> Invited guests, my brothers and sisters. I want to thank you sincerely for answering my invitation to attend this campaign launch. I'm delighted by this opportunity to engage with you and the good people of Ghana once again. I'm greatly humbled to be addressing all of you who are present here, but also the millions glued to your televisions and radio sets and those who are tuning in via the internet in Ghana and actually across the whole world. I want to thank you for sharing your morning with me, and I do not take this for granted. Thank you very much. Akpe kakakakaka. As I drove onto the campus of the University of Health and Allied Sciences, popularly known as UHAS, which was built during the tenure of our great party, I could not help but feel a sense of fulfillment that the dream and vision of our late president, Professor John Ivan Sata Mills, has been actualized in a very beautiful way. The Volta region retains a towering significance in the history of our great party, the NDC. Our founder and former president, Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings, of blessed memory, whose courage and vision inspired the formation of the NDC, hailed from this very region. Other stalwarts, dead and living, like Security Chief Captain Kojoshi Kata, literature icon and former chairman of the Council of State, Professor Nidevu Awuno, former Speaker uh, of Parliament, Right Honorable Edward Dua Jaho, Ambassador Dana Bodakpi, and my dear former Transport Minister, the late Jifa Aku Ativo, and many others, too numerous to mention, are all natives of this region and have toiled tirelessly to build our great party, the NDC, and our beloved nation, Ghana. It is therefore no coincidence that we are holding this launch here in the Volta region as a tribute to the many illustrious sons and daughters of this region who have toiled tirelessly for our great party. And at this moment, I'll ask that we observe a moment of silence for all the faithful departed who are not with us here today, but who worked to bring our party to where it is. One moment of silence, please. May their gentle souls rest in perfect peace. Amen. There was an English romantic poet called Bessie Bish Shelley, who in 1817 wrote a famous poem titled Ozymandias. I'm sure several of you would have read this poem. This poem was a cautionary tale about a ruler who was so full of pomp, arrogance, and a deluded sense of self-importance. One is struck by the poet's description of the clueless ru ruler as he goes on to boast. My name is Ozymandias, king of kings. Look on my works, ye mighty and despair." Unquote. Tragically, according to the poem, when one looked around to see these so-called works, 
one saw nothing but sand and decay. The poem mirrors our present national circumstances in a very uncanny way. Fellow countrymen and women, my brothers and sisters, I wish to thank Professor Joshua Labi, the convener of the John Mahama Campaign Committee, and a former Vice Chancellor of the University of Professional Studies, Accra, and who was my co-aspirant in the 2019 presidential primaries. <laughs> for picking my nomination forms last week. And I'll tell you a little joke at this point. When the uh, primaries were over the last time, and I had got 95.3% of the vote, I got a call from Professor Alavi congratulating me. And he said in Hausa, we grew up in Tamale together, so he speaks Hausa. He said, oh, this little play we're playing, look how you have disgraced us. <laughs> In Hausa is Wasanda Muna Inga, Dubai and the Casa Mukunya. I want to thank him profusely for picking up my nomination forms last week. I also wish to thank the hundreds of party supporters who accompanied Professor Alabi to perform that task on my behalf. By that action, I have officially joined the race to contest for the flag bearer slot of the National Democratic Congress. For the 2024 elections, which are considered to be the most important and defining poll of our time, I'm not taking this step lightly. It has been the product of months of prayer, broad consultation, and sober reflection. I've searched my soul and placed close attention to your voices, to your daily struggles, and to our present national predicament. At this stage, Ghana demands experience, not experiments. <laughs> Ghana demands togetherness and not divisiveness. Now is the time for bravery of heart and clarity of purpose. Six years ago, despite our best efforts, the people of Ghana decided to entrust the management and administration of this country into the hands of the NPP. They did so in the hope that the many mouth-watering promises that were made to them would translate into meaningful action that would mark an improvement in their living conditions and the well general well-being of our country. My brothers and sisters, six years on, those hopes have been dashed. Instead of the prosperity and progress that was promised, the last six years have been perhaps the most difficult and challenging period of our history as a country. This government has been clueless and in many ways callous. The unthinkable has happened and our country today is broken on all fronts. Ghana is bankrupt. We are saddled with debts we simply cannot pay and we have suffered the global humiliation of defaulting on our debts and being downgraded by all credit rating agencies to the lowest level ever seen in our history. Our economy is in the worst ever shape, with suffering and pain on an unprecedented level. Hyperinflation and ever-increasing price of basic items, including food products, have all combined to inflict unbearable pain on millions of Ghanaian households. Parents are being forced to make the choice between seeking prompt health care for their sick children or providing meals with their meager resources for their families. Our middle class stands the real risk of being wiped out on the back of an obnoxious debt restructuring program. The poor who depend on the middle class for employment and sustenance are on their own and uncertain of their fate in the future. Our aged pensioners and the elderly have not been spared either. In the past few weeks, they have been compelled to stage public manifestations outside the Ministry of Finance in defense of their livelihoods, even in this elderly state. Who would have thought 
that Ghana will come to a juncture like this, where a government would mete out such shabby treatment to our senior citizens, whose only crime is that they put their life savings in what is considered the safest financial instrument in the world, government bonds. We are this most depressing phase in our history where our economy has been destroyed because of the systematic mismanagement, misguided and clueless policy choices and the incompetence of President Nana Akufuado and his Vice President Mahmoudou Baumia. While our people struggle to keep their heads above water, government officials continue to exhibit high levels of greed, corruption, arrogance of power, dishonesty, blatant state capture, and conflict of interest. Unsurprisingly, no one in this MPP government wants to take responsibility for anything, including their flag bearer hopefuls, most of whom were part of the economic management team the team that was called the solid team. Today, everybody is running from taking responsibility. They continue to lay blame for their disastrous economic management on external factors whose relationship with our present sorry circumstances are at most tenuous. We all know that this economic collapse has been years in the making, just as we know it was entirely avoidable. Amid all the suffering, government remains obstinate and refuses to back down from the costly missteps that led us here in the first place. They continue to waste the precious little we have on dodgy and misguided projects and programs and on a bloated government. As they tighten the news on the helpless citizens by piling on more taxes and expropriating our money through measures like the domestic debt exchange, government offers no semblance of genuine sacrifice on its part. The national decay of the last six years has not been limited to the economy. It extends to all aspects of our lives. Our hitherto trusted state institutions today stand as pale shadows of themselves, undermined and politicized to the extent that they consider themselves as an extension of the governing new patriotic party. The youth of our country, the young people, male and female, see no future in the country of their birth. They see no silver lining at the edge of the clouds, which often appears only dark and gloomy, with no ray of sunshine seeping through. And who's to blame them when after years of struggling to earn an education, they are condemned to unemployment and acute lack of opportunities in their own country. If not remedied through our agenda to build the Ghana we want together from 2025, some of our young graduates and postgraduate degree holders may hit the pension age and never find employment in their entire lives except for national service. It should worry us deeply that the average young Ghanaian would grasp any opportunity to flee the despondent climate under which we currently live in favor of even the most menial jobs in other countries. We've always had a tradition of our people going out in search of greener pastures ab ab abroad, but the current mass exodus of active workers and professionals is profoundly worrying. The loss of all hope that anything good can come out of this country or that any available opportunities will be equitably shared amongst our people is what accounts for this. For some sections of our population, the unraveling of our national fabric and the collapse of our economy under this government form sufficient basis to dismiss all public office holders and politicians, both in government and out of government, as being the same. Some have lost all hope in the democratic process and believe that democracy is no better than other forms of governance. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the predica predictable effects of the betrayal of the people's trust by the president, his vice president, and his crop of leading officials. 
I wish I could say this in a more pleasant way, but you are the better judges of our current reality. Our present state and its effect on our people trouble me a lot. And this is why, as you have observed, at every significant wrong turn or decision taken by this government, I have, with the benefit of experience I have acquired, provided alternative solutions and even offered the expertise and knowledge of some of my party colleagues to help get us out of these challenges. And this is because there is an increasing gap right now between the Ghanaian society and the, Ghana, the Ghanaian political system. And it is one of these reasons why a change has become absolutely necessary at this particular time. Of course, I know how to deliver that badly needed change. Because over the last four to five years, I've continued to study our problems. I've continued to listen to each and every one of you and to a variety of scholars and experts. And I can say with full confidence that I've learned a lot during the period I'm, I, I'm speaking about and I'm ready and able to be the kind of president that Ghanaians are looking for. In our present situation, it is no longer sufficient to sit on the sidelines and offer suggestions which are most often ignored. I'm therefore coming before you in all humility and in response to the calls from my party and the generality of the people of Ghana to offer myself to serve this country and its people that I love so dearly by first putting myself up for election in the oncoming on NDC presidential primaries. There are many who say that my words just before I left office in 2016, that posterity will be the judge, have proven prophetic. In the face of the abysmal performance of the MPP government, and their harrowing dismantling of our country's prospects. But my brothers and sisters, I'm not the kind of leader who derives pleasure from or who can smile at my country's failings, even the failings of my political opponents. As noted by Otto von Bismarck, a wise man learns from the mistakes of others. As far as I'm concerned, there's no vindication to be derived from the suffering of the Ghanaian people. I'm offering myself for public office at this time because I appreciate the enormity of the task ahead owing to the level of damage that has been done to our country by this government. And I also know that such a mountainous task requires a steady, unifying, and experienced hand to build the Ghana we want together. And as I said, this is no time for experimentation. Ghana at this time does not need a try me to leader. Our country at this time urgently needs a leader with an unwavering desire to get things done in a no frills, no thrills, business like manner. Not one enamored with sloganeering, excessive partisanship personal comfort, and shallow populism. Ghana's next leader should exercise sound judgment and be able to make the right calls at the right time. A leader who accepts responsibility and works to fix the problem and not one who shifts blame onto others. The leader should be one whose heart is filled with compassion for the people and who has the humility to connect with and understand the needs of the people he serves. Our country requires a visionary leader who will build a prosperous and progressive Ghana for all Ghanaians and not just a few family and friends. We in the NDC will not run a government of slogans. 
and said we will run a government of action. As a leader, you should be held accountable for your promises to the people. Your word should always be your bond. Ghana's next leader should exercise sound judgment and be able to make the right calls, as I said, at the right time. Such a leader must continue and for emphasis, have the humility and presence of mind to take responsibility. And as I said, in this government, nobody wants to take responsibility for anything that goes wrong. Our next leader should be a leader whose heart is filled with compassion, as I said, for the people who he has the humility to connect with and understand. He should not be a leader who views the public purse as a family japadier, or in English, heirloom, or even the mandate given to him by Ghanaians to govern, he must not view it as a manifestation of his birthright. A leader who has his sights on leaving a legacy for posterity, that is what we need today. And with all the humility I can master, I believe that I possess these qualities. <laughs> that I possess these qualities and that I'm uniquely placed, having sat back the past few years to take stock of our country's trajectory. I'm aware of the extent of work that awaits the next government. There's so much to fix. There's so much to repair. And there's so much to heal. But I'm set and ready. Very ready. I am set and ready very ready to build the Ghana we want together with you. Our mission as the NDC is to get out of the current nightmare and to get out of it together, reaching to one another, listening to one another, and providing hope for all Ghanaians. Working with a pool of experienced, talented, and passionate men and women, and with many others from, from non-political backgrounds, including the private sector and civil society, who simply want the best for Ghana, and who desire to transform our country and its people, it can and will be done. The first order of business will be to reset our country to its default settings, as envisioned by the founders of the Fourth Republic. A nation of peace and prosperity built on the principle of integrity, justice, and equity, respect for human rights, and personal freedoms. A leadership of modesty and humility that forges consensus and carries the people along in the implementation of its policies and programs. At the top of our priorities as the new government in 2025, God willing, inshallah. At the top of those priorities will be to restore stability and inclusive growth to our economy. This way, we'll, we'll, we'll do this by bringing the various indicators under control to relieve Ghanaians of their suffering. We will strictly enforce prudence and responsibility in the management of public finances by cutting out waste and ostentation, which have become a common brand under this administration. Together, we will build the Ghana we want. We shall restore faith in our almost collapsed financial system 
and embark on sweeping reforms at the Bank of Ghana. We shall actively pursue policies to ensure robust local participation in our banking, financial, telecommunications, mining, agriculture, agribusiness, and manufacturing sectors. And all this will be anchored on our plan to grow the economy and, and create sustainable employment for our young people. We will make investments in productive sectors of the economy, like agriculture, industry, technology, digitalization, and tourism to spare growth and generate jobs for the teeming youth who continue to lose hope in our country day by day. My brothers and sisters, my comrades, with a limited fiscal space we are likely to inherit because of the mismanagement of the economy under the NPP, a new NDC government will give priority to continuing and completing abandoned and ongoing projects rather than rushing to commence new ones. We shall not rush to commence new projects. We'll take an inventory of all the abandoned and uncompleted projects in this country, and we will focus on completing them. We shall assemble and operate the leanest but most efficient government under the history of our Fourth Republic. We'll reduce significantly the size of government. And as announced in my speech at the UPSA late last year, in a crisis situation like this, it is my belief that this country can be governed of, uh, efficiently with 60 ministers and deputy ministers. We will initiate and undertake the most far-reaching constitutional, political, and governance reforms under the Fourth Republic which will be aimed at restoring confidence in our democracy and governance systems while making life easier and better for the people of Ghana. In response to the concerns and calls from many of you, we will initiate and undertake the most far-reaching constitutional, political, and governance reforms that will restore confidence in our democracy. We'll continue and bring to con conclusion the constitutional review process that was begun by the late President Atamils, which will include a review of the controversial Article 71 to reduce the number of office holders under Article 71 and reduce the disparities in privileges and monuments vis-a-vis the public sector and civil service. The payment of ex gratia to members of the executive under Article 71 will be scrapped. Yeah. And the necessary constitutional steps to abolish that payment will start in earnest in 2025. We will also begin the process of persuading the other arms of government, other than the executive, to accept the removal of these ex gratia payments. <laughs> Issues pertaining to the ex excessive powers of the president, proper separation of powers, strengthening of parliament, restoring the independence of the judiciary, independent and quasi-independent state institutions, and depoliticizing them will take center stage of the new administration. With renewed vigor, we will work to restore confidence in all institutions of states so that our people will see their institutions working for them as they should with utmost professionalism and non-interference from political actors. We must, for instance, end the chaos that now characterizes the computerized school selection and placement system for BEC graduates. As a first step 
to resolve this issue with the computerized placement. We should allow students to only complete their applications for SHS after they have received their BEC results. This will put them in a better position to know what their actual grades are and make them able to match them with the cutoff grades and raw scores of the senior high schools they wish to be admitted to. This will moderate expectation, ensure effective demand based on real results, and address the uninformed demands we currently see. It will also root out corruption and blatant discrimination from the school placement process. Fellow councilmen and women, the time has come for Ghanaians to receive proper accountability from those they elect to political office. This accountability can only be achieved by a new party coming into government in 2025. I promise Ghanaians that we shall investigate how public funds have been expended. And this includes the COVID-19 audits and the findings. It includes the COVID-19 audits and the findings from the Auditor General's report over the years. We must clean the organ stables and rid them of the filth and corruption. The anti-corruption institutions will be given unfettered access to do their work. The days of the infamous clearing agent will be well and truly over. <laughs> to ensure efficiency and professionalism in this endeavor, institutions of states will be empowered to work independently without interference. State-owned enterprises will not be a gravy train for political apparatchiki. We shall reintroduce the hallmark of my previous administration, and that is tolerance for criticism and the creation of a conducive atmosphere for the media to do its work without the fear of threats, harassment, and possible assassination. My brothers and sisters, I've heard many of my colleagues and comrades say that our next NDC government must also exact its pound of flesh. My fellow party cadres, my brothers and sisters, I dare say that there's no use fighting for political power if it is only to come and repeat the same mistakes that the MPP has made. We must therefore engage our grassroots to work together with us to build the Ghana we want. To be able to achieve all the above, we must see different personalities and backgrounds only. We must not see NDC and MPP. We must not see Ghana or Ewe or Akan or Dagomba. We must not see different religions, Muslim and Christian and traditional religions. We must look to ourselves and we must see Ghanaians as one people united with one destiny. You and I, hand in hand and working together in building the Ghana we want, it will take grit, it will take determination, but we have what we have not had before, the benefit of hand hindsight and reflection from afar and the benefit of experience to improve upon our successes and avoid our previous mistakes. As we roll out my campaign for the flag bearer slot of the NDC, and subsequently during the national campaign, I'll engage as many of you in the public as possible and interface with various interest groups to tap into your views on how to fashion the Ghana we want. As observed by Aldox Huxley, Experience is not what happens to you. It is what you do with what happens to you. 
In the coming days, as we go around, we'll be having conversations about our country. But more important, we must put into action the plans that we would conceive together. It will not be easy. It will take determination. It will take grit. It will take tears. It will take sacrifice. I promise you that I'll share that pain and sacrifice with you. And above all, I promise you hard work. I wish to assure you, my fellow Akatamansonians, that I've heard your concerns on how we can further strengthen our party. I'll certainly make you proud by addressing those logistical needs as we work to position the party to be more responsive to your needs. We shall build the most formidable political party and every Ghanaian will be happy and proud to associate with the NDC. Remember that in the history of the Fourth Republic, it is the NDC that has provided the most roads, water, electricity, educational, health, telecommunications infrastructure across the length and breadth of this country. It was the NDC that took the decision that every region of Ghana must have a public university. And that is why today we have University of Health and Allied Sciences here. It was the NDC that considered it prudent to build an airport in the Volta region. And on 6th March this year, all those planes are coming to land at the airport and bring the people to come and celebrate St. March. They would have had to come by road if that airport had not been built. Ladies and gentlemen, too much has happened to us as a people, but we have a duty to ourselves to learn from history and chart a path accordingly. And I'm giving you a quote from uh, President Ronald Reagan. He says, the greatest leader it's not necessarily the one who does great things. He is the one that gets the people he leads to do the greatest things. And I subscribe to what he said. The next government of NDC would not be about me. It would not be about forming a cadre of family and friends to enrich themselves at the expense of about our people. The next government of the NDC will be about you. In all humility and with a rekindled spirit, renewed energy, sharpened vision to help save our dear country, Ghana, I formally announce to you my candidacy for the presidential primaries. I formally announce to you my candidacy for the presidential primaries of the National Democratic Congress. And, and Thank you, thank you, pardon me. Thank you, thank you, pardon me. And I'm proud and honored that our NDC family, young and old men and women from all over the country are standing firmly behind me. When a commander leads his army into war, he wants to look back and see that there are soldiers, men and women, standing strongly behind him. I feel humbled by your love 
And I hope you all know that I love you too. I must also thank the diverse group of individuals who continue to volunteer, donate towards my campaign. Some of you students, professional traders, Okada riders, among others, concerned drivers, voluntarily set up platforms to mobilize funds to support my campaign. I want to thank you very much for that effort. My brothers and sisters, I am John Dramani Mahama. Your proven servant leader. And I ask you to bless me massively with your trust and your votes on May 13th yeah. and subsequently on 7th December 2024. Yeah. And I pledge to you that I will return your generosity and your blessings yeah. with the hard work in the presidency of Ghana. Ghana needs experience and not experiments. Ghana needs a leader who will hit the ground running on 7th January 2025. Ghana needs a leader who will not be given an orientation and excursion through the Flagstaff House because he knows there already. Ghana used to be the shining light on the continent of Africa, and I'm of the strongest conviction that we can attain those heights again. I believe it, and we will lead by example. And as I conclude, I wish to thank my wife, Lordina. <laughs> who has been my dependable partner on my whole political journey. And I wish to thank all of you, and may God bless the NDC, may God bless the Republic of Ghana, and may God bless us all. Thank you very much.